a virgin she wasn't even she was just still planning her wedding she had not even gotten married not to talk of giving birth to a child but god had a new plan a new agenda a new testimony a new song praise the name of the lord to Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus. Our God is good. Our God is faithful. Say thank you Jesus. Don't be tired of thanking Jesus. Thank you Jesus. We worship you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the Digging Deep Service of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Glory Worship Center. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Lord, we bless and magnify your holy name for this grace that you have given us to learn at your feet. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, even as we go into your word. We pray, Father, you will teach us yourself in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will provide enlightenment and illumination to your word this evening in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, Lord, that we will benefit from this in the name of Jesus. And at the end of it, Father, your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, you are welcome to the Digging Deep Service of the Redeemed Christian Church of God Glory Worship Center. Our topic for today is the parable of the sower. And this is a very popular parable. The parable of the sower. Our text is taken from the book of Matthew. Matthew 13 verses 1 to 8. Matthew 13, 1 to 8. And I'll read. The same day went Jesus out of a house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of heart. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no roots, they withered away. And some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruits, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirtyfold. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like I said, the topic for today is the parable of the sower. And so when we go into this parable, we would also know from the account of the Bible that Jesus was quite fond of speaking in parables, of teaching people in parables. And the significance of that was that he was able to relate the teaching, the gospel teachings with life realities and experiences that people could relate with, thereby making the teachings simpler and very, very related to what they know and they are used to. So here when we talk about the parable of the sower, what does this mean? So Jesus told us, you know, basically this parable in terms of those that have been exposed to the word of God. But in a way, those, the word of God that they have heard have not taken root in their life. The word of God that they have heard have not translated to any growth or development in their lives. And so Jesus compares those people by looking at different types of soil in the parable. And so in this parable, there are three key elements that are important in this parable of the sower. The first one is the sower, the second is the seed, and the third is the soil. The sower, the seed, and the soil. And all three must combine to bring forth good harvest, to bring forth fruits. And so when we, I mean, when we talk about the sower, the seed, and the soil, I mean, the only thing that this relates to basically is when you think of farming. So you have the farmer that goes out there to plant. And so in this case, you have the farmer who is the sower. You have the seed, which is a physical seed that the farmer wants to plant, and the soil in which the farmer intends to put the seed in. And so this is an analogy that Jesus used in teaching this to the people and so but the significance of that is in this case Jesus is the sower the seed is the word of God and the soil is the condition or the state of our hearts to receive the word of God praise the Lord and so we see in the Bible accounts how Jesus described the four different soils the four different soils, and I'll take them you know one at a time so Jesus spoke about the first soil that's you know it says and that first soul was described in verse 4 of Matthew 13. It says, And when he sold, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. So the first soul was the wayside, which you can also describe as the pathway. And so just to visualize what a pathway means, you know, the pathway is that path that whether you're going along the road or like in a farm, if we use the farm as um, our reference point, in the farm you have a pathway that people pass, everybody passes through that way. And so that pathway probably before was not a pathway, but somebody must have started passing through that way and other people followed. And then you find out that it just becomes the direction that everybody points, I mean, directs themselves to while going to 
So that's the pathway. And so if you can visualize it in your mind, you'll find out that the pathway is a place where after much passage, it becomes quite hard. It becomes hardened. It becomes impenetrable, so to say, because there's a lot of pressure that has gone on that particular land. Praise the Lord. And so this is the pathway. This is the place that the tap this seed fell into and you can imagine also from your mind what could have happened to this seed because that pathway is ardent is it's been it's been bruised it's been trampled upon for so many times so many years probably that the seed finds it difficult to have a hold on that kind of land praise the lord and so you find out that that particular place doesn't bear fruits and so let's relate it to this you know to our current situation not like speaking in parables now so you know the same way that jesus inferred it when the word of god comes to this kind of heart what happens that heart is hardened possibly you know because of the pathway that has been gone passed through many times it could also be that this particular person has been bruised has been brutalized has been traumatized and just have gotten to that point of being hardened by life's experiences so such a person hears the word of god and what is going on in the heart of that person is what else what haven't we heard before you know they've said this before they've said that before what has changed and so the word of god does not take roots and as we saw in that parable in verse 4, we saw that the Bible tells us that the fowls came and hit up that seed. And so in the same way, we find out that such a person, when he hears the word of God, what happens? Satan is quickly, you know, he's very quick to remind that person that, oh, remember that pastor that, you know, you, you heard a sermon. It was the same thing he said, and really, what has that translated to? Or reminds the person of these circumstances and tells the person, this word is not for people like you you know they're for different kind of people and so such word do not take root in the lives of the people and i pray we would not be the pathway in the name of jesus and so in in, in essence the the word of god is not valued it's not taken to heart by this kind of people because they just hear it they are eras of the word they are not doers it does not you know form any significant meaning in their lives so when they shut their mind a short mind cannot bear fruit it means that even the word itself is not taking root in their heart so definitely it cannot bear fruits and so satan continues to play in the hearts of those people and does not allow them to hear the word of god that will not be our portion in the name of jesus and so you find out that unfortunately this kind of people also could have just moved from one place to another and just asked themselves to say, oh, you know, the word in that church does not, it doesn't deliver results. But not knowing that is really the condition of their heart that has refused to receive the word that has been preached. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we move on to the second type of soil that Jesus referenced. That is the soil, the rocky soil. And so... For the rocky soil, you know, just as you know, Jesus further explained in that um, Matthew 13, is that kind of soul that receives, you know, the news, the good news of Jesus, and quite emotional about it. But what happens? There's no clear conviction that happens in the heart of such a person. And we can reference that in Matthew 13, verse 5, when he says that some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because no deepness. They had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no roots. So you can imagine, these are the kind of people that conviction, there's no deep conviction. Everything is on the superficial level. And so because it's on the superficial level, it's so difficult to, to, to know, if, you know, to stand because the word has not really taken roots in their life. So this kind of people, the people on the rocky soil, you know, they have initially have that desire to serve God. They have that desire to, you know, to, to, to walk in that path with God. But then something happens, trials comes, or they come to church and they think, oh, I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get. Or I tried to be a worker and oh, they didn't recognize me. They didn't do enough for me. Such people are very fickle and they can actually fall off. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So this kind of... Um, this kind of um, people that Jesus has referenced are the people that do not have roots and they fall to little temptations, little trials, here and there. And so for them, 
it's really about the message that sounds good that they want to hear when you begin to pre preach the deep things of god the things you know that calls them to higher service higher calling they find it very difficult and so it's easy to just say you know what let's just talk about the nice thing the things that don't desire, desire i mean i mean demand so much pressure so much from us as christians and they want to go through that path and these are the people that are also easily swayed by wrong teachings because they just want to have it the easy way and i pray that will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. For such people, those messages doesn't really reach their heart. It's really the lifestyle part of Christianity. And they just want to, you know, stay at that level. The third level, I mean the third soil that Jesus referenced was the one that you know grew among thorns. And that's we can reference um, in verse 7. It says some fell among thorns and the thorns strung up and choke them. So for these people, possibly it was even, a, you know, the soil was even a good, relatively good one. But what happened? Soon as the seed fell, the thorn also started growing up, you know, together with the with, uh, seed. So what happened? You find that even the thorns grow at a faster rate. They're taking more nutrients, more energy from the soil. And so it stifles the seed and does not allow the seed to develop and to grow. The, the thorn takes everything, takes the shine off the seed. And so, you know, in this case, it might have been that even the farmer prepared the soil very well. But when the seed comes together with the thorns, the seed didn't have a chance to survive. And so how do we relate this, you know, to our present day um, life that everybody, you know, can relate to? We find out that people in this category are people that have received the word of God. They've received that, the truth of the word enthusiastic about it to start with you know they just they go home with it and they believe that yes this is a new big yes i've received jesus as my lord and personal savior yes i'm ready to serve him but possibly they're not even ready to give up all the other distractions in their life they find it difficult to you know to fall to do the to 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 lean on that you know statement that says that they should you know follow jesus you know to take their cross and follow him it's almost like many things in their lives are competing for God in their lives. And because that is happening, they have these distractions here and there. It's so difficult to, 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 to dwell on the word of God and let it take root in their hearts. So you find out that this kind of people have so many things they think of. They think of my work, the quest to make money. This part of Christianity is long you know i can make my money quicker i can make it in a shorter you know in a shorter way and i don't have to go through all the stress so for these people it could even be that there was a christian that you know found got a new job and the job you know was paying quite well and then the excuses start coming no you know my job demands that i do this now i have a car before i didn't have a car it becomes so comfortable and because of that comfort and the convenience and the good life that has come as a result of the goodness of god such a person then begins to you know fall behind and begins to allow those extra distractions to take away their love for christ so this kind of people initially started well but the thorns of life stifled them and choked them up praise the lord and so you find i mean just to also buttress that point if you see um Timothy, first Timothy 6 9. First Timothy 6 9 says, But they that will be rich fall into temptations and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. So basically, it's about you know people that want to get rich. There's nothing wrong in richness as it is, but it's the love of richness that taking this kind of people away from God and does not allow them. And of course, that we know is like a snare. Once you are entangled in that snare, it's almost impossible to come out and the destruction comes after that that will not be our portion in the name of jesus and this also reminds me of that you know that place in the bible where some, somebody came to jesus and said what must i do to inherit eternal life and what did jesus tell that person jesus told that person he says that you know you should take you know so the Okay, so I, I read from Mark 10, Mark 10, 21 to 23. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing that thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and, the, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possession. So this was a person that had told Jesus, I do this, I do that, and I, you know, I'm compliant, I've done everything you're supposed to, I'm supposed to do. But then Jesus said, this is one thing you lack. Sell everything that you have, take up your cross and follow me. But it was very difficult. 
And why? Because of the richness and the good things of life that surrounded such a person. And that's why the Bible says, in, in you know, following up on that um, verses, Mark 10, 25, where Jesus said, It is easier for a camel to go through the high of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Because of what? The comforts of life, the luxuries that surround such a person. And I pray that we will not find ourselves in that picture in the name of Jesus. And the fourth and definitely not the least is the good soil. That is the fourth soil that Jesus referenced in that parable of the soil. So this is the good soil, the soil that had been prepared, the soil that had been plowed, the soil that was ready to take on the seed, was ready, had all the right nutrients and all of it. And then so when the seed fell on the soil, there was enough room for the seed to, 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 to progress, to develop, to, germ, to, to germinate and to bear fruits. And so this is the kind of man or woman that hears the word of God. The word of God takes root in the heart of such a person. The word of God is valued. The person, or the person makes room for the word of God in his or her life. The person wants to serve God. And as so doing, the person integrates every element of the word of God into his or her life in the purpose, in the, to, you know, to, to be able to serve the purpose that God has ordained for such a person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we've spoken about the four types of soil that Jesus referenced in that parable of the sower. But what are the key takeouts? I want us to just go through the key takeouts of this same four soils and the parable of the sower on its own. The first one is the fact that the sower went about doing what he was commissioned to do. There were different results came out of that exercise. And those different results were due to different factors, which we will talk about subsequently. The number two is that the seed itself wasn't the problem. The seed was good. The seed was the word of God. And the same seed went from one soil to another. So it wasn't a different consignment of seed or a different uh, configuration of seed. The seed was the seed. The seed itself was good, but it did not achieve the same result. You know, some fell on the pathway, some fell on the rocky soil, some fell amongst them, and some fell on the good soil. So the seed, we established that the seed itself was good because on the good soil, the seed did well. The third one was the condition of the soil, which was the differentiating factor of all this four soils. The differentiating factor was mostly the condition of the soil. And so we see in this Bible, in, in this parable, that the condition of the soil was instrumental to the outcome or the result that was achieved in all these cases. And so that is what will determine the success of the seed or the viability of a seed. And when you look at the condition of the heart, you're looking at what gives on that nutrients, what gives on that enabling environment for the word of God to have roots and to germinate. So when we look at our heart as, as, as believers, as children of God, and we talk of the heart as that soil that was referenced in the, in the parable, the question is, what condition is our heart in to receive the word of God? Has our heart been hardened by the experiences or the challenges of life that we have gone through or we are currently going through? Or we have weeds, thorns that are strangling the word of God in our heart due to unforgiveness, due to bitterness, due to the ability to move forward and let God? Those are the kind of conditions that allows that determines if the word of God will take root in our life. Or we are in a state where we are so distracted, where it's just so difficult. How do we leave, you know, the things that we used to and follow God? How do we stop those, those bad things or those bad friends because we don't want to lose out but still want to you know, love Jesus? But then there are other things that are competing for our attention. It is the condition of our heart, the attitude, the the thing that we hold dear in our hearts, that is what will determine the, the, the viability of the seed of the word of God. Praise the Lord. So we know that the condition of the heart of the soil has to be right for the seed to work, for the seed to bear fruits. And so when we look at ourselves as Christians, possibly we'll be Christ we've been Christians for so many years. We're just so used to doing things the same way. We're just so used to moving through the motion. We're used to just, you know, we're Christians and we just do our lives the, you know, the right way, in a way that just seems right. We're doing the, 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 the work and thinking that the work is what will deliver for us. 
But at the end of the day, this is an opportunity for us to look in words and look at the condition of our heart. What truly is the condition of our heart? If our con the, heart, the condition of our heart were to be read out, what would it look like? What will it sound like? Praise the Lord. Are we still loving God the way we're supposed to love Him? Are we still doing His will and the things that He wants us to do? Or are we just moving in the cruise and just flowing with the tide? I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And then the fourth takeout from what's, you know, this Bible passage is that even on the good soil, the good soil that you know, brought forth fruits, we saw that there were different degrees of fruitfulness that occurred, even on that good soil. And so we find that, you know, in that same verse, um, in that same passage, Matthew 13, verse 8, where we're told that there were hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold return. Hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. The same soil, what happened? Why do we have different results? But then the pointer to that is the fact that even on the same good soil, people's results could differ and would differ. And the main reason is because working with God, doing the will of God, requires our commitment. And it's the degree of commitment we put into it that would also determine the outputs that will get out of it. Praise the Lord. So to be able to advance in the kingdom of God, to be able to advance in the kingdom of God, we must we are required to die first to ourselves and to pick up the cross and follow Jesus. But then the question is how much of a price are we willing to pay in walking that path? How much of a price? To pay what are we ready readily able to give up to be able to advance the kingdom work praise the lord and so you know we saw in in the bible matthew 20 from verse 21 and so you know on the same soul we saw different results on the good soul hundredfold 30 60 fold and 30 fold 100, 60, and 30. So what determined those different results? Still on the same good soil. It's the level of commitment that we're able to bring, you know, even to the word of God. And so it's that level of commitment that then will determine the level of fruitfulness that we will get from that result. So that commitment determines the result. And so, you know, to be able to advance in the kingdom of God, we need to be able to die to self and be able to take up that cross and follow Jesus. It will come at a cost to us. It's come at a price, but the question to ask is, are we willing and able to pay what it means or cost to be able to, you know, to follow Jesus? And that was what Jesus was saying to John and James in the Bible when they came to him. And both of them requested to sit at his right hand and at his left hand, you know, in the kingdom of God. But what did Jesus tell them? Jesus told them in Matthew 20, 22, Jesus answered and said, you ask not, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? Which means that for Jesus, that, that's their ask was a very, very high one. Because the question Jesus asked them simply was, are you able to go through what I'm going to go through or what I have gone through? Are you able to pay that price? And that's the question to us today. That are we able to do the same thing, to drink of the cup that Jesus drank from and the baptism with which he was baptized? That is a very important question for us to ponder on. And so, what are our level of self-sacrifice even as we run this race that is before us and i pray god will give us the in jesus name amen and so you find out that some people are very content with oh 30 fold is enough as long as i'm fruitful you know 60 is enough i really don't need that 100 you know and they're satisfied with whatever they get but the important thing is not even to say oh, it's 30 fold or it's 50 fold is to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, to do all things in obedience and allow him, who is the rewarder of all things, to reward us even accordingly in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the question I want to ask us today is what type of soil are we? What type of soil is our hearts? Is it a good one? Is it one, even if it is a good one, is it one that will optimize results? Is it one that can double its yield? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. What kind of soul are we? I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And so for us to be able to drive productivity, to be able to, to, be, to yield, to be able to be fruitful in the kingdom of God, in the pursuit of the kingdom of God, in this spiritual 
We need to cultivate our hearts. We need to cultivate our heart. And so to properly cultivate our heart means that we need to be very conscious of the conditions of our heart, of the soil that we, 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 we have. Praise the Lord. So because when, what you find out is that everyone receives that seed. Everyone receives the seed. The word of God, everyone receives it. It comes to all of us. Everyone has the potential to be fruitful. Everyone receives it and has the potential for harvest. But it is really the ones that produce fruits or the ones that produce more fruits, you know, that are, those are the ones that open their minds to cultivation. Without cultivation, it remains a barren land. It remains a barren soil. But for the hearts to be productive, to be fruitful, then the earth or the soil needs to be cultivated. And the question today is, how can we cultivate our soil? How can we cultivate our hearts? The first one is preparing your hearts. Preparing your heart. If you remember the way we described the soil, the, the, the pathway soil, hardened by passage of time by passage of people the 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 rocky soil no you know the, the rocky soil also did not have you know roots and then we found out also that the thorns actually also was being choked up because of the foreign body that was on that soil so the important thing is to prepare your heart and how can you prepare your heart to remove all the limiting factors everything and the first one you remember when a farmer wants to plant the farmer prepares that land, you know, plowing is a method that also helps to, 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 to germinate and bear fruit because you're preparing the soil. The ardent soil, as it were, would be, would be broken down, broken in a way that it allows the hairs to come in. It allows nutrients to come in. It allows water to come in. It allows nourishment to be put into that soil. And that is what happens even to us as Christians. That if we allow ourselves to be prepared, God will walk through us. He breaks us down. The experience might be a painful one, but when you find out that God breaks us down, we appreciate His goodness. We're able to see ourselves in our vulnerability, and then we allow, begin to allow God to take charge of our life. But to cultivate a land or to prepare the land it takes patience. It takes patience because the land has been, you know, the land didn't become barren or hardened in one day. But then it takes patience, perseverance putting the right nutrients, the water, to nourish the soil, to make it soft, to make it fatter. Praise the Lord. And so the um, plowing the soil breaks the hard ground and it allows the seed to germinate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as the seed comes in, then it begins to fulfill the potential that it was initially set forth to do. It begins to germinate and it begins to develop and bear fruit. Praise the Lord. Our soil needs to be plowed. Our soil needs to be prepared. Every foreign body needs to be removed from our soul. And this takes repentance. It takes rededication. It takes refocus. And it takes our recommitment to doing the things of God. If you were not doing if you're not doing things the way God expects us, we are Christian. We know in our heart that we've deviated. It's a time for recommitment. It's a time to allow God to prepare our soul to allow us to begin to be ready even for the word that will come and for the seed that will come into our soil. Praise the Lord. The second way in which we can cultivate our soil and our heart is the application of the word of God. Knowing the word of God is not enough, but applying the word of God is what will tra drive transformation. And that goes beyond what I heard or I Somebody said it's about knowing and applying it to our heart. And there's so many ways that we can apply the word of God. So many diverse things can happen. I'll just mention a few. Ephesians 4:32 said, Be kind one to another. It is written, be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. So, you know, for example, whose heart has been had. Who says that I'm not going to forgive that person? The kind of thing he did for me forever, I will never forgive this person. But you hear this word of God. That's, you know, the Bible tells us that we should forgive. The person, the Bible tells us for the sake of Christ, even as Christ has forgiven us, that we should forgive people. So why would we not forgive people and let that hurt and that bitterness go so that we can be, our hearts can be ready to receive from God? That is one way in which we can apply the word of God. Praise the Lord. 
Another way we can apply the word of God, Ephesians 4.25 says, Wherefore, put in a way line, every, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. So that is a way of also applying the word of God, being truthful, being direct, being upright in the ways and the things that we do. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And so, basically, if we apply this word of God in our heart, we find out that we begin to bear the fruit of chastity, chastity modesty, discipline, and our lives will begin to transform. So the word of God itself is not enough, but it's the application of that word of God that can drive transformation in our lives. Praise the Lord. And the third thing that can help us to cultivate our heart is building a relationship with God. Building a relationship with God. And that is abiding in Christ and also align Christ to abide in us. Abiding in Jesus and align Jesus to abide in us. And that's what the Bible says in John 15, 4 to 5. It says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except ye abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So look at that, abiding in Christ. If you don't abide in Christ, that means that we will not be part. The Bible tells us that, you know, Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. If a branch falls off, it will die without being attached to the vine. And that's the same way. If we say, yes, we are Christians, or we know the word of God, but we're not abiding in Christ and allowing Christ to abide in us, then it means that there's no longevity for that kind of Christian because the branch will fall off and such a person will die. And I pray that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so this evening, I just want to encourage us, even as the word of God has done this evening, that the word of God, which is the seed, how much of it are we allowing to take root in our hearts? How much of the word of God are we imbibing? And how readily are our hearts available to be used of God? To be used even in serving him? How much of our hearts is ready to take on the word of God and allowing it to be applicable in our lives? And it's not, I mean, there's no rocket science to this. There's no, there's no magic to it. It just has to happen according to the principle that God has ordained. And I pray that God will give us the grace to be able to make our hearts available for him all the time, even as a place where his word can thrive in the name of Jesus. So this evening, I don't know if you, I mean, you've heard this, and you know in your heart that you don't even have a relationship with Jesus, or you know in your heart that you're not abiding in him, neither is he abiding in you. This is an opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And also, it's also a time for you to know that without accepting Jesus, you cannot be a good soil. There's no thing. You cannot be a good soil if you're not accepting Jesus. So this evening, I just want to encourage you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes unto the Father except through him. So I want to offer you Jesus this evening. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you will open up your heart to receive him. That you will open up your heart to have that deep conviction that is required to take root in your heart. The word of God this evening. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I just want you to say quickly after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life this evening. Take your place in my life. I give up of all my ways. I give up of all the things that have distracted me from accepting you or following you. Lord, I'm ready to do your will. Take me, Lord. Wash away my sins and accept me into your precious kingdom. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Congratulate you and I pray that you have accepted. The Jesus that you have accepted to follow this evening would always lead the way for you in the name of Jesus. And you will not have any reason, just as we have described of the first three types of soil, to go back in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And so would like to counsel you would like to follow up with you if you can just check on the screen there should be a number that will be scrolling now that you can call and we'll have one of our counselors that will speak up will speak with you and follow up with you praise the lord i just want us to lift up our voice this evening and just begin to 
sing this song. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold, refinest fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you my master I'm ready to do your will let's lift up our voice and begin to pray this, that the Lord he will help us the Lord will not give up on us let's lift up our voices and pray and say father please do not give up on me anything that you will do Lord that will make my soul fruitful father please do in my life in the name of Jesus father Lord I release myself father Lord Plow my soil, Father, in the name of Jesus, till it, Lord. Father, do whatever you need to do. But, Father, just make my soul useful again, Lord. Father, Lord, make me useful for your work in the name of Jesus. Father, make me fit for your use in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, Lord, I pray that you will make me useful, Lord. Father, Lord, I release myself unto you. Father, make me useful in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will create in me a heart that is soft, Lord. Create in me a heart that is open to be to be to be yielded for your use in the name of Jesus. Father, help me, Lord. Make me yield to correction. Father, make me yield to rebuke, Lord. Jehovah, make me yield to be used in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, create in me a heart that is readily yielded for your use in the name of Jesus. Father, a heart that is readily yielded to your word in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, make my heart soft. Make my heart open to be yielded to your word in the name of Jesus. And finally, I want us to pray and say, Father, please make me fruitful, Lord. Father, make me fruitful in the work that you have committed to me in your vineyard. Father, make me useful, Lord. Father, I do not want to be like those other three souls that were not fruitful that were not fit for use lord jehovah make me fruitful in the name of jesus lord i release myself make me fruitful lord in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you we give you praise and so father we thank you we give you all glory we give you all honor father in the name of jesus we thank you for your word this evening i will pray father lord that will not just be errors of your word but will be doers in the name of jesus Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will transform our hearts, you will transform our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will give us a heart that is open to your word, that will give us a heart that is open to receiving your word. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that even when your word takes root in our life, you will give us the grace, Lord, to be up to make it applicable in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all praise and glory for in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thanks be to God for this great worship service. I want to encourage you to give an offering to God, for God loves a cheerful giver. Please visit us online at www.rccgwc.org. Alternatively, you can do a direct transfer to the church's GTB account number. 0010425841 Join us on Sundays On Tuesdays you can join us at 6:30 p.m. for our digging deep service and on Thursday at 6:30 p.m. you can join us for our faith clinic service.
We encourage you to join us every first Tuesday of the month for a special one-hour prayer service titled Divine Intervention Service. You can reach us on any of the telephone numbers calling on the screen for counseling, prayers, or help. I pray that the word of God you have heard today profits you continually in Jesus' name. The presence of God will abide with you always. Signs and wonders will always be your portion in Jesus' name. The Lord accept your offerings and reward you abundantly. And may you continue to shine brightly in Jesus' mighty name.